Well, hello everyone, welcome back. I'm really glad you could join me again. So I'm here on holiday in Sri Lanka having the most wonderful time. I'm going to be sharing more soon, but first I wanted to let you know that today's episode is sponsored by Babbel. And for those of you that don't know, Babbel is one of the world's leading language apps. In fact, it is the first language learning app in the world and also the best selling. So if you've been watching this channel for a while, you may remember that I've used Babbel in the past to learn Italian. That really helped to improve my Italian. And now I'm just thinking about future travel plans. In May, I'm going to be traveling to France with my friend Nathan Rowlandson. So I thought that I would use Babbel again just to brush up on my French. So one of the things that I really recognize when I'm traveling is just how much we rely on the rest of the world to speak English. Everybody seems to do a wonderful job of doing that, by the way, but wherever I go, everybody speaks English. And I don't know about you, but I just feel a little bit awkward and a little bit lazy. So I thought that before I go to France, I will spend a little bit of effort and time learning French, just so that I can have those easy, everyday speaking conversations when I go to a hotel or a restaurant. And I think people really appreciate that, just making a little bit of effort. Now, one of the reasons why I prefer Babbel in particular is because the lessons are designed by real language teachers, which means you get to learn more real world conversations and pick up on those phrases that are very useful when you're speaking a new language. Faire de la plongée. Faire de la plongée. Faire de la randonnée. 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 Faire so, to get 60% off your Babbel subscription, all you need to do is click the link in the description box and you'll be able to enjoy that discount and start learning a new language. Please let me know in the comments which language you would like to learn and why. I always love to hear your stories and thoughts. So yes, again, click the link in the description box for your 60% off Babbel subscription. Well, good morning. It is 6 a.m. here in Sri Lanka, and I thought that I would get up early just to show you around this beautiful resort where I'm staying here in Unawatuna. And I just thought that this would be a lovely time to take you down to the beach here. It is so stunning here in the morning. I've been here for about three days. And this part of the holiday is really all about relaxing and unwinding. I haven't really had a beachy holiday for a long time where I've just done nothing for a few days. So to have the chance to do that has been really restorative and I'm ready to move on. So today we're heading off to another part of Sri Lanka called Ella. And that is kind of like the highlands of Sri Lanka where all of the tea is. So this next part of the holiday is gonna be a little bit more adventurous. So I'm glad that we've had the chance to really unwind and rest. It's been three days of pure bliss, just on this beach, relaxing. And I'll take you down here now and you can see just how stunning it is here. It's so naturally beautiful. Beautiful early morning sunrise, the waves lapping onto the beach. Nobody else is here apart from people cleaning. It's so peaceful, beautiful here. So this here is one of my favorite viewpoints, just looking at these boats through to the ocean. And then what I love about Sri Lanka is how green it is. It's filled with trees, foliage, 
just beautiful nature. It is so stunning here. Definitely lifts the spirits. A few people did ask why we decided to come on holiday to Sri Lanka. I have to say that it's never really a place that I had considered before. But when you're living in the Middle East, um, you're kind of in the center of the world. And so these places are a lot more accessible. So even though it is a four hour flight from Qatar to here, that is a lot less than about the eight hours that it would take from the UK. So we just wanted to have somewhere really peaceful, relaxing, and with a mixture of a relaxing beach style holiday and also a bit of adventure. So that is the reason for choosing Sri Lanka. We've both never been here before, but we'll definitely come back because as you can see, it is totally heavenly here. Just stunning. So I just thought that I'd take this quiet moment just to share the trip so far. I've had a few days of relaxation, as I mentioned, just doing nothing but enjoying being at peace, enjoying the beautiful sunshine, the local people, all of the food, it's been absolute heaven. And obviously it's always a little bit exciting and makes you a little bit anxious when you visit a new place because you never know what to expect. But I have to say that this has lived up to my expectations and more. It is such a stunning place and somewhere that I would definitely, definitely recommend for you to visit if, you have, if you've ever even considered it. It has a rustic beauty and charm that I have just fallen in love with. It is so naturally beautiful. The people emanate this gorgeous warmth. And I just think that this is one of the most beautiful places that I've ever been to. So even arriving at the airport was a lovely experience. It has this old school 80s feel. Everything's kind of stuck in time in the most charming way. And so we got to the airport and we had arranged for a driver to pick us up a really sweet guy but we ended up taking three hours to get here to the hotel and it should have been like an hour and a half journey and after the first hour in the car we suddenly realized that we were driving in the opposite direction so it was getting dark the rain was lashing down and because we've been flying all day I was so tired and I just kept thinking that this journey is never going to end but thankfully we got here and right at the very end, the little streets that wind through this place, Una Vituna, are so charming, filled with restaurants, little shops, people selling fruits, vegetables. It is utterly charming, rustic, but in the best possible way. So two days ago, we took a trip to a town called Galay, which is a Dutch town. The Dutch occupied, I think, in about the 1700s, and they built a walled town with a clock tower, a church, which is just stunning. And you can just see the influence of the architecture there. It is a very beautiful place. We stayed at a little place for tea called the Amangala Hotel, which is absolutely stunning. And if you're ever gonna stay here in Sri Lanka, I would highly recommend that hotel. Even thinking about maybe coming back at the end of this trip, adding two days on to stay there, if we have the time, because it is stunning. So that is a beautiful place. You can walk through the walled town. It's on the sea as well, which is stunning. The clock tower, the church is absolutely beautiful. You must go and visit there. And then it has some more high-end boutiques, not really like designer stores, but things with interiors. You can buy linens, tableware, lots of beautiful things that I wanted to buy, but I just do not have room in my suitcase. So upset, but maybe I'll come back one day and plan for that. So yeah, that was the most intense thing that we've done, is going for a little visit there for a few hours. But other than that, it's been just a time of pure relaxation and recharge. It has been heavenly. So the weather here has been really, really hot, very humid, sunny, about 34 degrees. Every time you come back to the hotel, you need to take a shower and get freshened up. I think in the Highlands it's going to be a little bit more cool, less sunny, a bit more cloudy and rain, which will be great for walking and trekking. So I'm excited for the next part of the trip, but again, it's the unknown of what is it going to be like. There's always that anxiety slash excitement about the next part of the holiday, but I'm very, very looking forward to it, and so far it's been totally amazing. So I'm just so glad to be able to come here, 
And again, I always say this, but one of the joys for me is sharing things. When I come here to these places, I always have in the back of my mind, actually in the front of my mind, how much everybody else would enjoy seeing it. And I'm always thinking about what I can share and show. Well, I am now back in Qatar. We arrived here last night, midnight, after a really long day of traveling back from Sri Lanka. So we ended up um, in Kandy, which is a city in Sri Lanka. That was the last destination. And from there, it was a three hour journey to the airport, two hours waiting in the airport, and then a five hour flight from uh, Colombo in Sri Lanka to here in Qatar. So got home last night about 1.30 in the morning. Had a good sleep. So today is all about relaxing, um, just winding down. This morning I went to the gym. I haven't been to the gym for the whole time I've been in Sri Lanka because there was no gym. And so it felt really great just to move my body and just get some exercise. And then I've done all of the washing this morning. And so I thought that I would jump here just to finish off this week's vlog and just to tell you all about the holiday. So I didn't really know how much I was going to be able to film whilst I was there. And although I did manage to capture a little bit of everything that we did, I wasn't able to, you know, set up the tripod, put the camera on it, put the microphone on and really go into detail at every single location. So what I did was I just grabbed my, iPh my iPhone and just filmed some of the things that we were doing. Also, this was a holiday, so I wanted to make sure that I was in the moment and trying to enjoy it as much as possible. But hopefully I have captured some good footage for you so that you can kind of get an insight to 
what we did and what Sri Lanka is like. So the last time that I recorded, we were just leaving Una Watuna to go to Ella. So we had a driver drive us from Una Watuna to Ella, which is three hours in the car. It was a beautiful journey um, all through the highlands and through little villages, hardly any main roads, so that's why it takes so long. But it was such a beautiful journey, and as you start to climb through the hills, the views are breathtaking. I remember just opening down the window, looking out, and you just see rolling hills, waterfalls, the most incredible cloud and sky. And Sri Lanka is so lush and green, and you're just you have this explosion of green and then some of the greyness from the clouds. It is just the most beautiful landscape that I've ever seen. It reminds me a lot of the Scottish Highlands, in fact, but obviously a little bit more tropical. But yes, driving to Ella from Una Batuna was one of the highlights of the trip. We stopped a few times at the side of the road to take some videos of the incredible views and then there was a waterfall. I can't remember the name of that, but I will put that in the description. In fact, I'm going to be doing a diary of my visit to Sri Lanka on my blog. So I will tell you all about the places and write them down there if anybody wants to check it out and plan a trip of your own. So yes, Ella is a kind of natural beauty hotspot. And where we stayed in the cliff tops, um, someone told me before we went that about 10 years ago, Ella was a lot different. It was a tiny community. Tourists were visiting there because of its beauty, but it wasn't really um, so well known. And now it is definitely a lot different. The little town of Ella, the, it's, it's very small, just a high street, but it's filled with shops, filled with tourists. And I can kind of see how the tourists visiting there, obviously me included, take away from the natural charm and beauty of that place. And it did seem a little bit of a shame that this beautiful, incredible place filled with beauty and kind of revolving around nature had this street going through it that was very noisy, lots of tuk-tuks going through, taxis, people walking. There were a few bars and clubs playing loud music and I just felt that it was a bit of a shame that this beautiful place had become kind of a tourist attraction. And that is what happens when there are beautiful things in the world, people want to go and see them. That is human nature, we want to go and see beautiful things. But I just wish that they could kind of provide accommodation for people to go there but still focus on the natural beauty. So we spent two nights in Ella and that was definitely enough. I think any more would be too long. There's not really that much to do or see. There are a few beautiful hot spots which I'm going to include in the travel diary. But for me I just felt the... because it felt so touristy and a little bit strange having that contrast of natural beauty, mountains, waterfalls, rolling hills, and then that little town where there were clubs and bars and restaurants and lots of people. It just felt a little bit disjointed and I didn't feel very relaxed or comfortable there. So even though it was beautiful, I was very glad to leave. Probably the highlight of my trip, the whole trip, was in Ella and we went to a tea plantation, which was just absolutely breathtakingly beautiful incredibly informative. I learned a lot about tea. Obviously you know that I love tea, but there was so much that I didn't know. We got taken around by an incredible tour guide, a 73-year-old man who'd been working there for 25 years, and he basically told us all about how you pick tea leaves, and then on the stem, what each part gives you from the tea. So the very top of the, of, of, the, of the tea leaf is the strong English breakfast type tea that you have in the morning. The middle leaves are more like afternoon tea, Earl Grey, a bit softer, and then the bottom leaves are the very light teas that you would drink that are very pleasant and smooth and not so strong. Perhaps you want to drink that before you go to sleep, not too much caffeine. So learning about the tea leaves and listening to this guy speak was just fascinating. Some other things that we did, we went to see Adam's Peak, which is a beautiful viewpoint of, of the mountains and rolling hills. 
and then we went to Nine Arches Bridge, which is a huge bridge, obviously with nine arches, and that was absolutely jammed with tourists, but very beautiful. It just winds through the, the hills, and then has this huge drop, and then everybody is walking along the railway track, and then suddenly the train starts approaching very, very slowly, and everybody stands back, and you see this train coming through. It's a wonderful sight. So those were the three things that we did. The tea plantation, Nine Arches Bridge, and Adams Peak. And I think those are definitely the three main highlights that people want to see when they visit Ella. After two nights in Ella, we journeyed to Kandy, which is a city in Sri Lanka, in the north. So we decided to take the train from Ella. This is quite a famous train journey. It's a blue train, you may have seen it. And it's very, very slow. It doesn't go fast at all. It takes six hours to get from Ella to Kandy. And I think really, if you drove, it would take probably four at the most. So we decided that we'd do half the journey from Ella to Kandy by train, and then we paid for a taxi to take us the rest of the journey. So six hour journey in total. But the train journey, I have to say, if you ever do go to Ella, do take the train journey. It is one of the most wonderful things I've ever done. Um, beautiful, clean train, comfortable seats. You can buy a first class ticket for about 14 pounds, but even standard class is perfect. You will definitely be happy there. It is clean, beautiful. The views from the train are just spectacular. It winds all through the, the mountains and hills. They have some of the doors open so you can hang out the side. It sounds very unsafe, but actually it's fine. The train doesn't go that fast and everybody's just enjoying themselves and having the best time. And it is just one of those things that is something you'd only do in a place like Sri Lanka. The views, incredible, and you just really feel a sense of adventure. That's what I can describe it as, a real adventure, going on a, on a very classic train journey. Another thing that I have to say is that the train station was so charming. It was kind of like a single story building made out of wood and all of the signage was wood and then the train conductor had this white outfit on. I'm not sure if I've talked about this, maybe I have, so apologies if so. But the whole journey felt very old school and beautiful, so definitely something that I would recommend. So then we got to, I can't remember the name of the place where we took the train to, to then go on to Kandy. Got a taxi from that place to Kandy, which was a three hour drive. And I have to say, I wish now that we'd just stayed on the train because the journey was quite an adventure. Uh, the guy who was driving us was very, very kind and telling us all about uh, the local area, but he was in a real rush to get us to our destination. And as with the journey from Unawatuna to Ella, there aren't really any highways that you can take. It's all mountainous roads. And literally the whole trip was downhill for three hours, winding like this through the hills. That was three hours of the journey. And this driver, was taking over all the cars, driving in the middle of the road, going fast. Buses were coming towards us and eventually we got pulled over by the police for driving so fast, which was such a relief because I was beginning to feel sick and a bit scared. So yeah, without being over dramatic, that was not the best journey. I was glad to get to Candy and be there in one piece, but I guess it's all part of the fun and something you can laugh about one day. So by the time we arrived in Kandy, it was late afternoon and we were just totally exhausted, a little bit dishevelled from the erratic journey and we just wanted to get to the hotel and just rest. So that's what we did. We didn't really do anything that day. We just had uh, a dinner in the hotel, got showered, cleaned, relaxed, unpacked the luggage and just went to sleep. We were kind of both saying to each other that we were ready to leave. I think it had been a lot of travelling, a lot of heat, um, and we were like, oh, it's been beautiful here, but I think it's time to go home soon. But the next morning, after a sleep, we were revived again and ready to go and do some more exploring and so happy to still be on holiday. So the first day that we went to, the first day in Ella, 
The first day in Kandy, we hired a little tour guide to take us around to some of the interesting spots. We went to a temple in the mountains, which had incredible views. And then we got taken to a place called the Kandy Spice Garden. So this is quite an interesting place, by the way and not something that I'd seen on any of the recommendations online, so maybe it's a bit of a hidden secret. But you basically get a guide who walks you around the garden and t shows you all different types of plants and trees and flowers that provide um, medicinal benefits. So you c he was telling us about things for removing hair, things for brightening the skin, things for improving digestion and all natural. So he walked us around the garden and explained all these different things which I found so fascinating. And obviously looking at all of the plants and herbs and trees I also loved as well because I love nature and the outdoors. And then we were taken to a little outdoor kitchen and they made us a little um, dish with coconut and spices in bread which was gorgeous and then we got a massage which was quite bizarre sitting outside he asked us to take off our, uh, off our shirts I was like no I'm not so I, I was wearing shorts so someone gave me a leg massage it was a bit bizarre but kind of we, at this point we're thinking just go with the flow this is this is a holiday and it's one of those times where you just have to roll with it so we did so we had a little massage and then uh, s then someone put some hair removal cream in my legs natural hair removal cream so a little bit bizarre but very interesting <laughs> and then at the end we were taken to the gift shop which was filled with all of the creams lotions pills potions that were made from the stuff that is in the garden so there I spent a little bit of money on a few things, quite expensive there by the way. I was a bit shocked at some of the prices but I just thought it was such an interesting tour. We got free food, a massage, so I felt obliged to, to buy some stuff there. By the way, I forgot to mention, this whole thing is marketed as free because you don't pay an entry fee, you get to walk around and you're, you're told all these things given a guided tour, you get a little bit of food, the massage, it's all free. But I think it's on the assumption that you'll go into the shop at the end and spend some money. And I definitely felt like I had to spend some money because it was a nice experience. So that was very interesting, quite bizarre. And then after that, we went to the Botanical Gardens, which was one of my favorite things. The Botanical Garden is in the middle of Candy. It's quite a big park and it was filled with local people. Flowers and plants are stunning. Some of the trees there are very old with huge roots and I just felt like in the middle of this quite bustling, erratic city, this place of calm and peace was just wonderful. So I would definitely recommend doing that as well. So yes, it was a really wonderful trip a completely different holiday than I've ever done before. Something I found enriching, um, eye-opening, fascinating. It was relaxing. I found it humbling, found the people incredible. I just had a really wonderful time and just a great chance to spend time together, relax, enjoy new things, new experiences. So I definitely had a wonderful, wonderful holiday. And I'm now glad to be back here in Doha. I'm going to be here for another week, I think. And whilst I've been away, I've, I think I mentioned before about that I was reading the book about Bunny Mellon. I've been reading this a lot. I read it on most of the plane journey yesterday. And I'm so engrossed in the life of this lady who created so much beauty. And because I haven't been home and I haven't been creating, when I'm at home, I'm always creating, I'm creating videos for you. And when I'm doing that, I always have to include something like a recipe or a flower arrangement or a table setting. And because I haven't done that for so long now, I'm craving to do something beautiful. So I think what we're gonna do is go shopping. Uh, we want to do a few things in the house here, get some flowers. We're gonna have a dinner tonight with some friends, so I'm gonna cook. So I might set the table here, do some flowers. 
And then we, we just need to buy a few things for this place. Um, things for storage, because we need more cupboard space and things for shoes, so that everything has a place. Um, so I'm going to enjoy doing that. I'll probably go and look around some of the design stores like uh, Pottery Barn. So if I do that, I will film it. But I would like to know if there's anything you would like me to talk about on the next vlog. So I am planning to do as much as I can, but it's probably going to be a lot of chatty vlogs whilst I'm here. And then when I go home, we'll have a lot of stuff to do together. So please let me know if there's anything you would like me to share about any experiences that I've had in my life or any anything that you would like to know. Please let me know and then I can talk about that in the next vlog. But yes, reading the book about Bunny Mellon, I've almost finished it. It's just inspired me so much and I'm excited to go home and start doing things in my house. So spring is well and truly upon us and I'm going to really, really get going with the garden. I think in the previous years my budget's been a little bit tight. I haven't been able to do exactly what I want. Uh, but I am going to put some money into the garden because it, it's just going to bring me so much joy in life. So I thought, you know what? put a bit of money to the side, do some things in the garden. So I'm going to buy some more big pots. I want to have a garden filled with pots and flowers and plants. So I think when I go home, I'm going to focus on that. And then just doing some other things in the house, just to enrich me and share with you. I just love doing it so much. And uh, yeah, definitely inspired by the Bunny Melon book. So yes, I hope that you have enjoyed this little episode. Um, it's so nice to be filming again. I always feel strange when I'm not filming because I've been doing it for the last four years and every single week I'm sharing, sharing, sharing. So when I am on holiday, I do kind of get this niggling feeling in the back of my mind. Oh, is there anything that I can do? Can I film? But then I'm battling that with just trying to enjoy my time on holiday. So I hope that this has been fun and interesting and I hope that it has kind of given you a taster of the holiday that I've had here. Thank you so much for joining me. I look forward to seeing you next time, but until then, take care.